Whew. I have had this black cloud following me all morning. And they said it was going to rain, but not till tonight. Well, that is not the case. I got a lot further on my list than I thought I would because I started early. And I just went and mowed a commercial property that nobody's going to care if I'm there that early. But, uh, let me see if you guys can see this. I doubt you can, but let me see what I can show you here. Put this window down a little bit. See that property right there? There you go probably hard to see the stripes but it stripes really nice I've been mowing that one for years but it I trimmed it all out I always trim my properties before I mow them well, almost always um, but doo -doo -doo. oh cool but I trimmed the whole thing out and it started to sprinkle on me so I was like, ah, what's it going to do? What's it going to do? So I'm like, ah, screw it. It's just a light sprinkle. No big deal. I'll go and do it anyway. So, sorry, I'm clearing out emails. I get a thousand of them a day and I don't have time to check them. Um, so I jump on the mower and just saw a very, very light sprinkle. I'm like, ah, I can finish this one anyway. Well, it really started to rain. So I was like, ah, screw it close the trailer up I was like I'll just come back and mow it at least the trimming's done well I sat in the truck for a second and the rain stopped so I jumped out and I went and started mowing it and I mowed all the back and three quarters of the way through the back it started to rain pretty decent and I came around the front and I finished the front in the rain and then I blew it off that's when I really really love my BR 600 the BR 700 I have is nice too but it's the BR 600 is more for focused blowing shit off so it like it directs all of its power a lot a lot better than the 700 but uh, all that wet grass that was on that nice concrete driveway stuff came right off with that 600 um, I know a lot of guys use like the EBZ 7000 or whatever the heck they are and and a lot of guys like the Echoes. Everybody has their own brand. For me, it's steel. I like steel. I'm not going to switch. Um, no matter who recommends one to me, a different brand, I'm not going to switch. I love steel. Um, let me touch on two things real quick. One, somebody asked me in a video to show my clipboard, like my log, of that I marked down. You guys always see me marking it down when I leave a log. Um, I'm not going to show you guys that. I can't show you that. It has customers' names, addresses, everything on it. And then I mark the date each time I'm there. Um, so that's not going to happen. I'm sorry, guys. I just I can't show you that. It has all my customers' info on Not all of it, but their names and addresses and stuff. And it's just very unprofessional um, to advertise that to the world. So I'm not going to do it. Another question is... Uh, I've had this a few times. A lot of guys say, why are you spitting all the time when you're on the mower? Like, you always see me go, T -t 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 -t. <laughs> and guys are like, do you chew chewing tobacco? No, I do not. I do not use chewing tobacco. Um, I eat sunflower seeds all day. I have them all over the place. Um, my favorite are the sizzling bacon ones. I love those things. But uh, I, I use other ones too. It, it just all depends. I like the original ones. I'm a fan of that. And uh, they have one that I just found recently. It's called Buffalo Ranch, and I love them. They're really good. I, I'm not a big fan of the regular ranch. It just after a couple mouthfuls of them, it gets old. But that's what I do. I get a handful of them, throw the whole handful in my mouth. I keep it over here in the side. It looks like a squirrel. Um, and then I slide one over at a time, crack the shell, and spit the shell out. That's why you always see me spit. Um, but I am going to go get some lunch. And uh, I'm going to go put the clutch in the Great Dane because I just, that was one of the emails I got, the alerts I got, the clutch showed up. So 
I, uh, I put the new spindles in yesterday. I got all kinds of cuts all over my hands. Spindles are usually not an issue, but they were yesterday. What a pain in the nuts. Um, I sprayed them all down with free all that sit for 10 minutes and all the all the bolts come right off no problem um, No big deal, but the nut that screws on the center pin that goes up through the spindle that your your blade bolts in the bottom of It's the old-school style that uh, It didn't the nuts that screw on the top weren't the same size with the new spindles So it didn't they didn't screw on so I had to go get three new nuts for that for the top. They're big they're uh, three-quarter inch uh, by 16 so I went to the hardware store and got three of those uh, I believe when I had the last Great Dane and I replaced the spindles on that I ran into the same issue um, and then the pulleys that sit down on top they're geared they have teeth inside and it sits down over top of that center pin and then the, the nut goes the nut goes on the top that holds that pulley on that's the nut I'm referring to um, one of the pulleys, the teeth were gone. It was rounded right off, and that's from it just getting loose on there and somebody just running it without fixing the problem and tightening it back down. It's just, I had that same issue on the last great day I had, and I had to order a pulley, but I got this idea. I'm like, maybe I'll just fly up to the John Deere dealership and see if they got one. And uh, I got up there and sure shit, they had one there. So. I got back and I put that on that worked great. They're supposed to be three quarter inch spacers on or in between the blade and the spindle when you put it up in there. There was only two on each blade. Um, so the bolts aren't running all the way up in there. It's just, it's the way it's designed. What a lazy bunch of fucking idiots. Excuse my language. When the post office, when something comes USPS, they always carry it up and they put it up on my porch. It's sitting on top, the clutch is sitting in its box on top of my mailbox in the rain right now. Idiots. Like your job is so difficult. I got a buddy of mine that is retired from the post office. He worked there forever as a mail carrier. And he told me, he said, dude, he goes, I'm not even gonna lie to you. He goes, some people are like, oh, we deal with a lot of crap and it's hard and this thing goes, I'm not even going to lie to you. He goes, I got like the easiest job in the world. I love it. He goes, and that's why I'll never leave it. But he, uh, he's told me more than once. He's like, you know, in the winter time, you got the window open on the truck and, you know, those postal workers that have to walk all day, then, I mean, that's one thing, but like around here, they all drive around. So he's like. He goes, I said, yeah, he goes, yeah, it gets a little cold, but you got a heater right there blowing on you. You wear a jacket, hat, gloves, and whatever. He goes, it's not that hard. So, for them to do something like that, that's lazy. Anyway, I'm going to cut this short. I'm going to run in the house and get some lunch. And when I come back on, I'll be messing with a great day. That's that. Look at all that standing water. So, it poured. It literally just stopped. The sky's lightened up a little bit. Just stopped. So anyway, here it is. Here is the Great Dane. Okay. We will start off with, I paid a thousand bucks for it. Thousand dollars. And it needed a couple things and I knew that. It has brand new tires on it in the back. Um, it needs that cap. No big deal. I can get them a tractor supply. They're cheap. Um, it, I was told when I got it, it needed one spindle and a clutch. Turns out it needed all three spindles, which I ordered anyway. It was cheaper to do it that way. Um, so I put all three new spindles on yesterday. And then what I found out is when I put all three new spindles on, that nut right down in there that holds the spindle, um or holds the pulley to the spindle, the nuts that were on the old ones did not fit on these new spindles. It just slid right down over top of it, which if I remember correctly, when I did the spindles on my 48, I had the same issue. So I just went to the hardware store and got three new nuts like I did last time, and done. There we go. The spindles that were in there, the six bolts underneath that holds the spindle in, 
it was missing two of the bolts on that one they're just studs they come on the spindle uh, the studs were completely missing um, I think this one over here had two studs that were sticking through but no nuts on them so I put new nuts on them um, but these pulleys they have like teeth in them they're geared and the uh, shaft that comes up out of the spindle is also geared and it slides down and locks onto that and then you screw the nut down on um, this one over here the teeth were completely gone out of the pulley this pulley and that pulley were good that one they were completely gone so I went to the John Deere dealership and they just happened to have one like I told you guys before everything on these cross references over to John Deere so oh yeah this is a 52 inch deck um, that Kawasaki 19 horse motor that's what comes on them that was the same motor that was on my 48 um, he says that's only a couple years old that engine's been replaced uh, very well maybe I don't know um, the fuel filter was shot completely gone and it was missing this lower clamp so I put a new clamp on put a new fuel filter on it uh, one thing I do like oh see the rubber grip on the handle it's missing off this one um, but I'll get something for that um, these are the original pins this is what the pins look like that you slide in and out for changing the height I didn't have these they were just like small look like trailer hitch pins um, in mine when I had the 48 so I like that the original ones are in here that's what's supposed to be on there you see this here looks like that broke at one point and somebody welded it that does not know how to weld they did the same thing over here on this side so I'm gonna grind that out of there and lay a nice bead in there and weld it the way it's supposed to be um, you can tell the same person had done some welding they did this here and they just kind of like flat laid it in there and that that there was done with a stick welder I can tell by the way it's in there but another shit job um, people I've always said people that don't know how to weld should not weld that by all means doesn't mean you shouldn't teach yourself I taught myself how to weld a long time ago but I practiced on crap and scrap pieces of steel until I got it down um, this hydro motor over here has been replaced that's not the original one this one um, it said in the ad that new pumps on it but I don't know that this one is new this one may have been replaced as well when I got it the whole thing was covered in grease it, w it was just packed this clamp here I could grab this hose and turn this whole hose so I'm guessing that that's why it was packed in grease because this hose was leaking um, they're very responsive these lines all look brand new it looks like they've been replaced recently as well um, so my plan today was to do the clutch on this because I got the alert that the clutch had showed up this is what showed up and it is not the right clutch so the guy is sending me a new one um, here is the old clutch that I took out um, they do separate into two pieces. They're not supposed to separate into three, but it did I'm gonna see if you guys can see this Can you see those bearings that one is chewed up in like? Half seized in it is seized in there. The one over there is Half seized I can move a little bit these they're just half of them are gone half the ball bearings are gone out of there And the rest are like chewed right up and just like they welded themselves in there from heating up um, the problem is is it didn't um, what was I gonna say when I put the new spindles in it last night just for the hell of it I put the belt back on it because when I got it the belt was off um, this belt was off this deck belt that goes around all the pulleys and goes up to the clutch that was off and uh, I started the mower up obviously drove it around when I bought it um, but I realized why because I put the new spindles in last night put everything back together and then I threw the belt on because I, I just wanted to see what it was gonna do um, a lot of times people have replaced clutches when it's just the PTO switch and in the year and a half I think almost two years I had my Great Dane I replaced that PTO switch twice it just kept taking a shit for some reason but um so anyway 
every time I turned the key and I went to start it, it wouldn't start, but I noticed these looking over, I noticed all these pulleys were turning. So every time I tried to start it, these were turning, even with the PTO off, which tells me that that clutch was seized up. And it was just trying to, uh, it was trying all the time, it was trying to run the clutch. No matter what, the clutch wasn't disengaging, which now that I took it apart, I can see why. Um, but like I said, so I've done that to it. There is down here, if you guys can see that, there's a pivot point right there at the back of the deck. Pivots on this like ball bearing type setup or ball type setup. And uh, this one was loose and just dangling in there. So the deck was flopping around. I tightened that up. Um, there's grease fittings up in there. There's the lowers in there. There's grease fittings all over this thing. Um, I used up two tubes, two full-size tubes of grease, greasing this thing, which tells me it was never greased. And if it was, it's been a long time. So it was not maintained properly. Um, the guy I got it from, I don't believe he did any maintenance on it. I believe he took it all to a dealer that's near him. Um, I've heard good and bad things about that dealer, so I don't really know. I'm not going to mention their name or say anything about them more. Um, cause like I said, I've never really done any business with them. So I don't know. I've just heard good and bad, but it does have, the tank was empty. I poured a five gallon can in it. And it looked like it could take another gallon, gallon and a half. So I'm guessing six, maybe seven gallon tank. Um, that's a little bit bigger than what was on my 48. I think on my 48, I got just barely five gallons into that tank. Um, but this is it. I hosed it or I sprayed it all down last night with degreaser out in the driveway let it sit for 10 minutes and i pressure wash it off uh, most of it was black the front of the deck had that uh caked up like grass all over the front and now it's all yellow again i mean minus where the paint's all chipped off but hey it's a used more what are you gonna do um so it, it cleaned up a lot better than i thought it was going to it has and see if you can see this here um it is showing i don't know if you guys can see that 1265.1 hours so total on the machine is 1265 hours but like i said the guy said the engine's only a couple years old it's been replaced so um so the engine doesn't even have that maybe a couple hundred hours on the engine uh i think i did pretty good for a thousand bucks you know like i said i've mentioned in other videos uh you guys know that i've been dying forever for at least last year and a half or so to buy another Great Dane. Um, and I just, everybody wants too much damn money for them. They, they think they're a million dollars because it's a stander and they just want a ton of money and there's no way I was gonna pay people what they wanted. And then uh, Mike from Something to Look At, I forgot to mention him in the last video that I mentioned about the Great Dane, but I am giving him full credit on this. As a matter of fact, I am blaming him for this because even though I've wanted another Great Dane, I've kind of been looking, I've never actively been looking. Like, I haven't been on a mission to find one. I've just been looking every once in a while when I get a chance or get a few minutes. I've been scanning Craigslist and stuff. Um, but until he started doing the restoration on his and really got me going and got me realizing how much more I really wanted one of these machines again. So yes, Mike is getting full credit for this. I am blaming him. It is all his fault. And I know he's perfectly okay with that. So, um, but yeah, so now I got to wait for this clutch. I, I told the guy, I said, every minute this machine's down, I'm losing money. You know, can you overnight me the clutch? And cause when I eat, when I emailed him and told him, Hey, um, you sent me the wrong clutch. He said, I am so sorry. Get me the numbers you need and I'll send you the right one out right away. And, uh, I mean, it got here pretty quick. It wasn't even supposed to show up till tomorrow. So, um, so I sent him an email back and I, and I asked him, I said, I gave him the info he needed. And I said, can you please overnight this part? I, or this clutch, I need it like right away. And he hasn't answered me back yet. So we'll see what he does. Um, can I go a couple more days without it? Obviously, yes, I can. I have enough pieces of equipment, but I'm impatient and I want it. And that's just the truth. So, 
So that is the saga of the Great Dane so far. I'm super excited. I can't wait to roll with it. And you guys will definitely be seeing videos on it. Um, I just got to get that clutch. So as soon as that clutch comes in, hopefully uh, I get it put in. I got the other one out. Obviously, I just showed it to you. But is uh, it runs phenomenal, even at low idle. It purrs like a kitten. And it freaking whips around. Very responsive. So all the major stuff seems to be good. Um so hopefully that clutch will come in soon and i'll get it put in and then hopefully everything is good from there but that's when the video will be of me actually using it so um oh one more thing the uh in between the blade and the spindle there's supposed to be three quarter inch spacers i remember that from my last one and when i took the spindles out yesterday there was only two in between each one so i double checked and i looked back through the manual that i downloaded for this and there definitely is supposed to be three well i tried just running the bolts up in there with the blades because i took them off it's got high lifts on it and they're in really good shape so i sharpened them up in the blade sharpener there and um i tried running the bolts up in there with just the two spacers and they dead ended and the blades were still loose so i happen to have three spare quarter inch spacers for the walker for adjusting the height of the deck and they are exactly the same so i grabbed those i threw them on there put all three blades on they tightened up just as they should everything seems good to go um so yeah just a couple little things here and there but it's a used piece of equipment you get what you get man i think i made out pretty good i think the guy was fair and honest with me and uh I put a little bit of money into it which I expected as far as having to use so much grease I mean that's that's a little crazy but you know it, it's used it, it is what it is man you got the stuff you got to expect when you buy a piece of used equipment a lot of newer guys starting off ask me all the time you know would you buy used or buy new you know this is you guys have seen in my videos the used equipment I bought the things I've had to do to it you know you it is what it is you you got to expect you're gonna have to put a little money into it and if you know how to do the stuff then uh you're that much better off you don't have to pay someone else to do it or a dealer it's going to charge you out the ass so um yeah that's that and that is it for today so stay tuned for the for the videos of moan with this bad boy i can't wait